Hickok 45 here with a Robinson Armament XCRL. Yeah, a mouthful. Ever seen one? Ever shot one? Ever owned one? Let us know. <laughs> yes, this is an interesting firearm, a multi caliber. Uh, in fact, meaning uh, you got a couple of, I guess, sizes more or less. This one is uh, multi caliber, can be changed out to shoot, you know, 223. Uh, six point what five gr the Grendel, yeah Grendel 224 Valkyrie, uh, uh, the AK round uh, 7.62 for 39, uh, 300 blackout. I sorry said 223. What else do I have? Uh, yeah, but anyway for the lighter caliber, same uh, size cartridge more or less. Okay, in terms of width I guess. Then they've got an M model that's more like 308. Uh, I think uh, 243, 6.5 Creedmoor, and that sort of thing. But this is the L version. And uh, this is one we'll donate. Uh, Robinson Armament contacted uh, us and wanted to know if we were interested in, in uh, you know, shooting one, you know, trying one out. And so I said, yep, if we can keep it and donate it, I think it looks pretty interesting. Checked it out. And I wasn't all that familiar with it, really. I think I'd heard of it. So I, you know, I don't know. I wasn't sure what it was. It looked uh, worth doing. I thought some of y'all might be interested in it. And uh, it'll go to a worthy cause, like the Tennessee Farms Association uh, auction. And uh, so I've been shooting it. Uh, many of you have saw it maybe on Sunday morning video a few weeks ago. And uh, I said, yeah, if you can send, uh, you know, several caliber changes and we'll mess with it, see how all that works. It'd be kind of interesting. So... Here it is, and it is in the 300 blackout format right now, and I'm gonna shoot a little bit with each, uh, at least of three different chamberings, and kind of show you how it works, and you know, give you my impressions of it, and it might be something you'd have interest in. I tell you, I, I did, I've learned a lot about it in doing some research. I've also learned that in terms of opinions of other people who have been aware of it a lot longer than I have, uh, that they are very uh, impressed with it. And uh, it, but it's interesting, before I started researching around uh, much about it, I got out and shot it and took it apart. And, and, and I became more and more impressed with the, uh, the way it was made before I got any other, anybody else's opinion on it. And I just, wow, this is kind of interesting. I wasn't expecting this. This thing seemed like a, a solid, uh, you know, piece of machinery and the design is really you'll see when I take it apart the bolt and everything if you haven't seen this this firearm and how it operates so anyway that's what uh, briefly you just switch out the barrel uh, the bolt on on you know changing it around and maybe the gas tube uh, maybe the op rod for for depending on the caliber and all that sounds like I wouldn't want to fool with that but I think you'll see unless I fumble through it uh, and make it look more awkward than it is, I think you'll see, wow, yeah, you may have to change out some things to get a different chambering going, but it looks like it's pretty smooth. Uh, hopefully that's your impression, <laughs> it's my impression. So I've got some 300 black out here, and uh, I don't know what this Underwood or this is uh, Federal, what I've got in here, but it's 220 grain. We Now it came with these sights, and I, you know, I might put an optic on it, I don't know, before we finish with it, uh, not sure, but I I uh, messed with these, well, I didn't mess with them much. I did just recently, because it with uh, two or three of the chamberings, it seems to print a little bit low, but on 5.56, five, it seems to be right on, at least it was before I messed with it, so, but it's close enough for government work, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Uh, I may put an optic on it anyway. Okay, so here we go. I don't think I need my ears. These are subsonic rounds, I do believe. So we got a side charger, okay? And it's a non-reciprocating, just because I know you were curious about that. We got ambi everything, as you can see, the safety, the mag release, uh, slide, or the uh, bolt lock, and really just everything is ambi, which is great, because some of you are so weird, you're left-handed, right? Or wrong-handed, excuse me. Let's just start out by Slinging one out there at Mr. Gong. You want to? There we go. Yeah, I need to remember to hold up on him a little bit. <laughs> okay, he's holding too much. Yeah. All right, how about something right here? Like a two liter. Whoa! Heavy 
everything over going down the hill. <laughs> now let's smoke some pot with this uh, 300 blackout. One, two. Boom. Boom. <laughs> oh man. Don't want to shoot everything. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let's see. This is uh, subsonic. I could actually put one on cowboy. Yeah, I could. Might even shoot at a buffalo over there. Ooh, look at him. He almost wanted to fall. Oh, boy. He must be set hard. Let's try the ram. Yeah. He might be glued down. John might have nailed him down. <laughs> Okay, 300 blackout. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, th now this thing it retails for around two, 2200 I think. Okay, for the gun in one setup. I think the conversion kits are around, they range from between four, five and a half, you know, 100 bucks, something like that, depending on what is needed. Like I say, some of the, the conversions just require, uh, you know, another barrel and you know, maybe almost nothing else, you know, the magazine. Uh, some require the barrel and, and replace the bolt. And, uh, and then some require a different op rod and, and, the, and the gas tube or something like that. You know, so it just depends. But that's a, kind of the money you're talking about on this thing. This was in the, the, the SCAR trials. And as I understand from what I've read, it, uh, it competed very favorably with the SCAR. And one reason it didn't, it might have beat it out. And there are some people with military experience I've seen comment that it, it really should have it preferable to the SCAR. Uh, but some quirk, they didn't, uh, uh, when they submitted it for the test, they didn't include a blank adapter or something. And the military just, you know, impatient said, forget it. And it, you know, so it couldn't proceed or something like that. So it wasn't like it failed the test and just wasn't good enough. But anyway, so I've learned a little bit about it, and, and I have been very impressed personally uh, with it so far. A uh, couple of negatives maybe, but it it's just seems well, really well made. Let me, let me show you. I'll, I'll go ahead and convert and talk about it as we do it. Now, we're just kind of field stripping it now, uh, YouTube. Uh, we're not going to really modify anything other than just uh, what it's designed to do. And it's designed to shoot several different rounds. And so that's what we're, we're going to do with it. And all you need, I think it's a quarter inch hex wrench. And first thing I'll do though is, I don't think I brought, yeah I do, I do have the uh, muzzle brake with me, but there's no need to do that. What you do is you take this bolt right here, hex, regulation. It's about, I don't know, three turns. I think I've determined one, two, three turns. And that releases the barrel. Okay, there we go. It's a little warm, I wonder why. So there's your 300 blackout barrel. Barrels are labeled what they are. And then it uh, breaks down, like right here, you push this, whatever, okay. And he also has a captured pin you can take the upper totally off, you know, just like a normal AR does. Uh, although this is not an AR, it's kind of a mix of an FAL, an AK, and I guess an AR. But it's all kind of proprietary. You can't, you know, throw in trigger parts for an AR or anything like that. This is its own animal. It really is. So, and you see the, you'll, you'll recognize something that might look kind of familiar. That got a kind of a... A short op rod on uh, on this caliber, but that's uh, kind of an interesting gizmo. Now the gas tube on this one has come out. Yeah, there we go. This one takes a short gas tube when you have the 300 blackout in. That's the first time I'd had it in when I did the, because the other chambers. I think I'll go back to 223. Yeah, five, Okay, so I I got this bagged. It becomes packed and kind of blister packed and cardboard in a really kind of organized way, but it. Yeah, as you get it out, you got to do something with it. I'm not sure what the best thing to do would be, just in different bags or whatever, but I want to keep it organized because I ain't too smart and I don't want to mix it up. So what I have here is I have the bolt. Now look at this. This is what's impressive. It's amazing. It's the way that thing fits together, the carrier and the bolt and everything. You just, in there, you just pop that out. 
take this bolt out and it says no wait a minute this has a 556 five, bolt that's right i don't have to take that out i've already got the 556 five, bolt and firing pin for 556 five, and 300 blackout so i just leave that in there otherwise it's simple to pull it out put a different one in right so got that that stays the same but the op rod uh, uh changes back to the long one okay longer op rod so this is 300 blackout put it over here with the 300 blackout magazines okay and then also what i do yeah i got the uh gas tube over there I'll keep it all straight so just a longer op rod and this is the op rod that is used with uh, 556 uh, 6.8 and uh what else everything, everything except 300 blackout that i have okay so that just pops right in there like that it doesn't even i mean it just sits there and you just kind of hold it like that when you put it back together and uh what did I do with the uh, mainspring, recoil spring? Did I, oh, I left it in the other op right here. We go. It's the same on all of them. Okay. Yes, yeah, really complicated it is. This, uh, this upper is uh, milled out of a, machined out of a, it's a monolithic of a solid block of aluminum. Proprietary, supposedly harder than aircraft aluminum and all that, I don't know. But some of the best grades of aluminum. Okay. I mean, this gun is designed for war. Okay, that goes in pretty simply. You see, you got that little there slip in the side there. Okay. And I need my long gas tube. Let's put that back in. And uh, I, mean, I think I can go ahead and just close that up. And, yeah, it's really, really complicated. Isn't it? And then this goes in, it's simple <clears throat> to get in correctly. You just uh, make sure the, I think I maybe should have put that in first, but no, it didn't, didn't matter. And that little groove goes down, okay? Just like that, all right. And the gas system is adjustable uh, on all the chambers you see right there on the, here's the one I just had, 300 blackout. I had it set on seven. It might have done okay on five or six. I don't know. Depending on the ammo you're using, and you just adjust that. So, pretty cool. And uh, so, I'm ready for a barrel, aren't I? Get the bolt forward. It, it really doesn't matter, though, I don't think. Okay. Pretty cool. Okay, for now, I'm, I've got my setup for 5.56, five, so I just need to find a barrel that says 5.56 five, on our 223. There we go, two, two, three. Y'all gonna be doubly sure, right? And goes uh, in there like that. The uh, stock folds. Might just do that to make it a little simpler to work with. Make the gun shorter. All right. And it pops down in there and make sure it's all the way down. Yep. Barrels down right against the gas tube. We're good to go. We just need to tighten it up. And that's it. It it's, goes into a little uh, indentation in the bottom of that barrel, holds it in. And I forget the torque you're supposed to use, or you, know, you don't have any torque wrench, but just make it snug. You know, you're good. Okay. And there we go. Open this back up. A little awkward for me because I'm an awkward sort of human being. There we go. All right, so now we're in five, five, six, two, two, three. Boom. So double check the barrel, two, two, three, and uh, you know all the bolt and everything is correct. So we just need some two, two, three ammo. There's some five, five, six. Same thing. It will. Well, I, I read it's, it's chamber two, 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 three wild. I think it's called, which means. It's, you shoot either one, two, two, three, five, five, six, and you're gonna get accurate, uh, you know, you're gonna get accuracy out of it, okay. All right, I don't know, this is a magazine they provided with it, I'll try both of them, but I've not had any issues with any of the magazines. This is uh, Daniel Defense, I think. Also, I wanna thank Alabama Holster for their support of the channel, by the way. I usually have a couple of those on me. Great uh, little Kydex concealment holsters. I've got the phone, I don't have my phone in, but I got that right now. But I've got my phone holster and my pocket holster. 
Uh, they make inside the waistband, outside the waistband holsters, purse uh, holsters, just great, great outfit. Many of you have uh, reported back positively to us about them, and uh, I'm not surprised. I'm really not. Okay, 223, 556. Let's take a couple of shots. Uh, yeah, see, so what holds the barrel in? Is that one nut really, really in a solid way? And uh, you got your AR control. Like I say, you've got your, there's your uh, mag release, of course, on both sides. You got the paddle over here, mag release, and then your bolt stop or bolt catch is right there. Okay, it, it, you, you uh, lift it up to engage it and then push down. It uh, works. Well, I'm not messing with it. Let me get that magazine out of there. Uh, okay. It's a non-reciprocating uh, charger handle, like I said. So if I just raise that up a little bit, it locks back. And if I want to release it, push down on it. And uh, it's on both sides. So that's almost ambidextrous if it's on both sides, right? Okay. So I've, I've been shooting it some, and I have uh, grown to, to like it now. It's not as uh, natural yet to me, as you can tell, as an AR. But it's, uh, it just feels good. And, and the simplicity of... You know how awkward I can be sometimes when I'm taking something apart and have trouble with it. Uh, even though that might not have seemed too smooth, uh, <laughs> what I was doing, it, it, uh, it was not a problem at all. And if I did it very many times, I would get to maybe pretty good at it, you know, and quick. Okay, let's take a couple of shots with the 5.56, five, 2.23. Two, all right, put one in the chamber. That's a little louder, a little bit louder. Does have the muzzle brake. Yeah, so I can hold right on with two, two, three. Okay, must be going high. How about this guy right here? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> I tell you, it has a really nice trigger. I, I like it. Now, it's just the standard trigger. It's not a Geisley or anything. I don't, you won't take a Geisley trigger or anything like that. It's a two-stage trigger. and just has a good feel to it. Real uh, distinctive wall, and I, I just like it. And it's like, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's pretty nice. And I... I I, I don't know what else uh, you're dying to know about it, but it's a pretty nice rifle. I'll take a couple more shots in 223 and then we'll switch it again. Yeah. Pretty cool. Like I say, I didn't mess with the sights too much. Uh, you know, it's not the firearm I'm going to have for too long. We get the sights on well enough to hit something with it. And uh, it's, it's, you could readjust them when you're changing out chambers. If, if this were my rifle, I would figure that out. Okay, if, if I'm using these metal sights, for example, you know, what adjustments I need when I go to 300 blackout or whatever and just track that or if I had an optic on it, what I might want to do, depending on what you're, you're shooting. But... Uh, uh, let's see. So you got the longer gas tube, and of course you adjust the gas here. Now, if you noticed on that short gas tube I had in when I started, it was back in here, and it's set up just a little bit differently. The little detent you don't have to depress because it's in here, and you just reach in and move it with a, a, a round tip. You can you can still adjust it through there without any trouble. But all the others I have it, it's out here where it's easy to adjust if you need to for some different ammo. Uh, comes with a two chamber uh, muzzle brake, or is that three chamber? I don't know, but that, that muzzle brake. And uh, anything else about it? This is this is the one, one piece that is a standard AR, is the pistol grip. So you can change that out if you want to, the favorite AR grip. Uh, this is a non reciprocating, as I said. And also, if you need to or want to, 
and that's a controversial thing, the, uh, the forward assist in it. But if you push in on it, you need to, it'll, it acts as a forward assist if you, you know, had to cram one on in or something like that, which is not always advisable. Uh, very smooth, very smooth operating. And uh, this is a, a new one. It hadn't like, been broken in and shot a lot. Uh, the stock, like I say, it folds. You got this comb piece. This comes off, and you can raise it and lower it a little bit. And you just push on both sides. And when you just look at that thin stock, it appears almost like a cheap little stock, but it's, it really is not. It feels pretty good, and I, I like the way it operates. Yeah, I could use a little more length. And I might do that if you'll forgive me. I might put a little more length on it, okay? I noticed one of these fits on there. Okay, maybe I can hit something now. All right, so that's 223. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Um, you know, in this monolithic rail, you know, that Picatinny rail is part of it. That's all one piece, that upper, all one piece. Yeah, and again, open it up and we're clear. Press that. She opens right up. You can take the bottom off without any trouble. Pull this out, which I will do. Because now I'm going to go to uh, 6.8. Okay, we'll wrap up with 6.8. Let me get the. I got a bag over here. 6.8. Uh, Label, yep. Okay. So now 6.8. I'm uh, and I got my cheat sheet just to make sure I don't do anything. I'm pretty. I see. I leave the same bolt, or not the same bolt, but the same firing pin and the op rod yeah i don't need my cheap sheet so a cheat sheet i don't think okay uh so I pull this out and i don't change the gas tube all right same op rod and all this i just fish my bolt out a bolt in here so i'll need that mag of ammo too on for six eight okay this is actually a product placement ad for a Ziploc, right? And it says right on there, 68. So this is really tricky now. It's kind of hard to do. Watch this now. Pull out the 5.56. Five, Put in the 68. Okay. Did I do that right? <laughs> that was hard to do. <laughs> and I set this back uh, on there. And I'm ready to go. Okay, 68. And I don't know, I, I couldn't tell from uh, the company's videos if it really mattered that much. You could take this out and replace it and put it back together if you want, and then do the barrel, or you do the barrel first. And you know, obviously you wanna make sure you're not <laughs> trying to shoot rounds through the wrong barrel, right? That would not be advisable. Where'd my wrench go? All right, so what barrel do I have in here, boys and girls? I have the 5.56, right? So. We don't want to try to shoot a 6.8 round, 6.8 SPC, through this barrel. So we'll take it out. And, woo, that one got warm too. And we'll put in the 6.8 SPC. Double, triple check. Make sure you're doing the right thing, right? Okay, this is normal operation. Again, the YouTube. <laughs> All right, there we go. Put the 6 8 in. A lot of people, well, I guess companies or several, have tried this multi caliber concept, uh, and it appears that Robinson Armament got it right. They really, really have. This works. Really well, okay. So we're in six eight world now, and we uh, we had the same gas tube and uh, the same uh, firing pin carrier op rod, but we just changed out the bolt back here, okay. And all that comes in your conversion kits, you know, so what's in this kit, what you need to use with it, and everything. And of course, we need a different magazine, something with six eight ammo in it, and I just happen to have one right here. Yeah, so before I stick it in there and shoot, was there anything else about it you're dying to know? Check their website uh, if you have interest in it, uh, and you can learn a lot of, about it. The, uh, you know, the owner, you know, Alex Robinson, contacted me. Good guy. I've had a few questions for him about it. He's always uh, promptly answered those questions, 
and uh, I'm still I'm finally getting used to calling it the XCR I wanted to call it the ACR you see on the target there I had to write over my A I even wrote it up there wrong when I made that paper target it's XCR for exchangeable caliber rifle okay so get that into my head all right and this is another of my favorite uh, chamberings I got the chambering for the 76 Super 39 I just haven't used it shot it yet I'll do that at some point so 68 y'all familiar with that cartridge it's the other ammo out of here it's a 68 really neat cartridge popular hog hunting round I understand all right now I, th I think everything but the 556 five, prints just a little bit low about the same place actually so let's shoot a couple of these see if it works all right my, my ears in all right six eight Pretty much the same sight pictures, five, five, six. Okay. Yeah, okay, I like that. I'm almost at six o'clock hold. There's not much difference, just a little bit. I haven't shot this paper yet, have I? Let me get over here and put a couple on it. Oh, <laughs> Uh, we got another pot uh, smoking endeavor here. Let's take that one out. So cloudy. Yeah, six eighths a nice round. <laughs> I likes it. I likes it. All right, let's go back over there. Uh, don't want to damage any animals. But Really like that trigger. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. How about you, burn barrel? <laughs> pretty nice, pretty nice. Uh, I, I'm not sure what it is about that trigger that just, it just feels good the way it breaks. Uh, and, uh, you know, I may have put a scope on this thing, see what I can hit with it at, at, uh, at some distance maybe or something. So anyway, the, the XCR uh, is what we have. And, you know, there's your adjustment. Anything I haven't shown you there. Uh, uh, if you need to adjust the gas for different ammo, and it's got the barrel designations right there on the barrel. Uh, like I say, it, it, it is highly respected and I was not uh, really that familiar with it. I think I'd heard of it, but might be, uh, you know, if you're looking for a multi-caliber uh, firearm, uh, it seems like quality. You got the ambi uh, safety, and that's one of the negatives. I don't, I don't like it. it, gets in the way, but for most people, they kind of like that. It hits my knuckle, hits John's knuckle, so we have a problem with that. If it were mine, I'd you know, replace that, take that off, or dremel it down. Uh, and anything else that bugs me a little bit uh, I don't know maybe the stock length if it would uh, come out another inch imagine that you know in my uh, with my height if it'd uh, extend another inch I'd like that prefer that and uh, of course you got your M lock and uh, plenty of uh, slots for that nice Picatinny rail and uh, and most people are going to like the, the ambi fe features there, I think, in, in most cases. So, the, the side charger, if you're right-handed, that, that, is, that is just really nice. If you're a lefty, maybe not so much. Uh, be more like an AK, you're reaching over or reaching under. Uh, because it's not reversible, okay? It's not reversible. It's, uh, okay, now I'm going to release my mag. Yeah, here we go. So, just, just, uh really simple simple gun you know <laughs> i mean I, i've entertained a notion of like you know really a, a rifle like this i could sell all my ars and my <laughs> i've got 300 blackout i have uh six eight uh spc five five six of course you i mean if you had if you if, if this were a rifle you really liked it might be one you don't it, it works both ways double-edged sword right you could have all your chamberings and calibers that you like to shoot and you hunt with one and target shoot with one or compete with one, whatever it is 
you can have the same rifle with the same great trigger or whatever uh, that you like and the sights that you like and, and all that kind of thing. But that would only be good if you love the rifle, right? Uh, so uh, if you didn't like it so much, it wouldn't, wouldn't be that good. But I don't know what else to tell you about it. We'll do another video maybe with a different uh, uh, 76 Tupa 39 perhaps. And uh, if I'll have it a while, mess with it some more. Uh, but, but my impressions so far are really positive. They, they really are. Uh, even if it's something I wouldn't maybe buy for myself, which I can't say I wouldn't at this point, but uh, either way, it's, uh, it seems like a really quality piece of hardware. It really does. So anyway, there's probably some things I haven't told you about that you would like to know, but check out the website, do your own research if you're in interested in something like this. So I'm just kind of happy to be able to, to bring it to you. I'm especially happy to have it to play with and experiment with. And I don't know if uh, like my changing all those out uh, made it look like too busy or too complicated a gun to own or, or not, <laughs> if you're not that familiar with this, but it's not an easy task you know, to design something with that simplicity and, and how simple that was to do, even if I didn't make it look simple. And uh, they have uh, really uh, accomplished that in, 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 my, in my, for me personally, if I was interested in a multi-caliber, I, I, I think it's great and, and the simplicity is there in terms of changing uh, things out and switching over to different calibers. So it's not like you're going to be doing that in the middle of a gunfight or a, a match or something. So anyway, that's my take today on the, uh, the XCR multi-caliber rifle is what it's called. And it's, uh, it's a little heavier than an Arabia negative than a, your, your AR, if you've got a 5.56 five, or even a 6.8, this might be a little heavier than that. I forget the exact weight on it, but it's a little heavier. Uh, and, and of course, it's a piston-driven system. They're generally a little heavier, but just a really a serious uh, firearm, no doubt about it. So that's all I'm gonna tell you about today, because that's all I know. I'm glad you came out and uh, Hope you have a great week. Life is good. Oh yeah, that's better. This is a great gun for defense. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Uh, while I've got you here, I want to remind you of our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. Talon Grips makes uh, grips, can you believe it? Uh, for all different types of firearms. You can get rough texture or more of a rubberized texture. Uh, it just sticks right on there. You know, really affordable, really cool option to in improve the grip for your handguns. Um, or, or rifles. Uh, so please check them out at talongungrips.com. You'll be glad you did. And also Ballastol. Uh, Dad has been using Ballastol for many years. It's a cleaner and a lubricant and it's non-toxic. Uh, it works really great and we're happy to have them on board since it's been a part of our shooting endeavor for a very long time. So go to ballastol.com, talongungrips.com. And also, while you're out there, I'm juggling all these things here. Also, uh, while you're on the internet, please do check out our other social media like Hickok45 on Facebook. There's also Hickok45 on Twitter, the real Hickok45 on Instagram. There's a John underscore Hickok45 on Instagram where I do some things. There's Hickok45.com. Uh, you can find us also on GunStreamer. So check out all that stuff and then watch more videos.